Hello, this is Jason with MathTutorDVD.com and today we're going to explore some more of the algebra capabilities of the TI-89 calculator which are really impressive. Uh, so what we're going to learn in this section is how to add and subtract rational expressions and we're also going to talk a bit about what we call partial fractions expansion. Uh, both of these topics are kind of related to one another and if you've ever done these these topics uh, for an algebra class or for a calculus class or as part of another problem you'll know that they can sometimes take a lot of work so the fact that the calculator can do this is really 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 uh, impressive uh, go to F2 algebra menu and you will see that uh, there is a command here called common denominator that's what we're going to use to basically add rational expressions and for those of you who don't really remember uh, an algebra expression that we call a rational expression is just when you have a big giant fraction and on the top you might have a polynomial and on the bottom you might have a polynomial so x divided by you know x plus one is a rational expression so when we want to add those things together they can take some time to do by hand to get the proper common denominator but in the TI-89 it all works out magically now before we get to dealing with algebra expressions I want to really show you what this thing is doing here um, let's say you want to take the fraction one-fourth and you want to add it to one-third now we can just type this into the calculator command line just 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 as it is no problem and it would do the math um, because it knows how to deal with fractions but I want to show you that it's really doing the same thing here in the common denominator function so when we hit enter it's going to do exactly what you would expect it's going to find a common denominator between these two denominators which would be 12 it's going to transform each fraction into an equivalent fraction with common denominator 12 add the numerators together you're going to get 7 twelfths now like I said this calculator is smart enough to ba basically be able to do that right on the command line you're going to get the same answer but it's important to know that this common denominator function that's in there that's really all it's doing it's looking at the two fractions that you type in or could you you could be typing five fractions in um, when you involve X and it's just going to try to do its best to find a common denominator transform the fractions just according to the rules of algebra and then add them so in this case for a simple fraction the common denominator is 12 that's the only thing we have common there so if we multiply the first fraction by 3 over 3 we'll get 12 on the bottom we'll have 3 twelfths if we multiply the second fraction by 4 over 4 we'll have 4 twelfths and 3 twelfths plus 4 twelfths is 7 twelfths so that's basically what this algorithm is doing now if we do a more complicated guy remember it's common denominator number six so I'll just hit that if we do something a little bit more com uh, complicated let's say we do x divided by x that's a fraction it's a rational uh, function because we uh, or, or rational uh, expression because we have a polynomial on the top and a polynomial on the bottom they just happen to be simple in this case we add to it let's say 2 divided by x now notice in this case I chose a simple example the denominator here is already common so really all you have to do is add them together and that's what the calculator does the denominator is already the same so it just takes x plus 2 puts it over x there's really nothing more that it can do it's just basically trying to add these fractions together when you have algebra and variables involved it's going to look a little bit messier but it's doing basically the same thing that you do when you try to handle numbers All right. now that was an example when the denominators were the same so you could just see what's going on now if we go back to the algebra menu to the common denominator menu put that back up there let's type something a little more uh, complicated x divided by and I want to do x plus 1 so I'm gonna put that in parentheses so I have the fraction x divided by x plus 1 and I'm going to add to that fraction uh, the fraction 2 divided by x I'm gonna close that off so you see here this denominator is x plus 1 this denominator is x so they're different so the calculator is going to have to find the common denominator before it can add these fractions together so when you hit enter it thinks for a second and then outspits a pretty impressive answer for something that you could hold in your hand something that would definitely take you longer than that to do by hand uh, but when you look at it you can see that it's doing the right thing the only way to really find a common denominator between these two things is to multiply x times this guy which is going to give you x squared plus x that's the new denominator and then of course it applies the conversion factor to each fraction 
um, separately to get the proper common denominator. And then, uh, for instance, this first fraction, you just multiply by x over x. Um, and so on the top, you're going to have x squared. On the bottom, you're going to have our common denominator. This fraction, you multiply by x plus 1 over x plus 1. That's going to give you this common denominator. When you collect all those terms and when you add them together, you get what you have here in the top. So that's basically what the fraction, what the uh, calculator is doing. Let's see what happens if we do something, you know, much harder like uh, x cubed plus 4. Let's go ahead and wrap that in parentheses just to make it clear. We'll wrap x cubed plus 4 and we'll divide that by uh, a different denominator. Let's do x minus 1 just to make it harder. And we'll be adding that to everything else. Let me wrap that x minus 1 in parentheses as well. So we basically have the same fractions we're adding together, but we're adding a third fraction with yet a different common denominator. Let's see how long it takes it to come up with that. So it thinks for quite a long time, and you can see uh, the, the complicated answer that it arrived at, and it arrived at this, uh, this common denominator here. You can see what we were adding together. Uh, this large rational expression plus this one plus this one. Uh, again, it's all stuff you can do by hand, but just like anything else when you're dealing with calculators, the fact that it can spit this out so quickly is going to save you so much time to check your work that you're really going to be uh, in good shape. So that is basically the idea of adding rational expressions. You can put anything you want. You can put as, as many rational expressions as you like. You can put uh, as complicated numerator and denominator as you like. And uh, you know you're gonna you're gonna be able to come up with some impressive answers. Of course, as long the longer the problem that you have, the um, more complicated the answer, and the longer it's gonna take the calculator to compute. But just remember, this common denominator it's sort of a poorly named function. It makes you think that all it's gonna do is find a common denominator, but it should it should prompt your memory to to realize that the calculator is finding this common denominator prior to adding all of these things together. Okay, now closely related to this uh, concept of adding rational expressions is the concept of partial fractions decomposition. In fact, they're they're almost uh, they're almost uh, the same thing. So let's go in here, or they're almost opposites of one another. Let's go into F2, and if you go down here, there's nothing in here that says partial fractions uh, expansion, but this command expand uh, basically pulls it off. The command expand pulls off partial fractions expansion. So what I mean by partial fractions is what if you have something like x divided by, and in the bottom you have, uh, let's call it uh, x plus 1. We'll close that and we'll open another one times x minus 1, something like that. So you have a giant rational expression here, x on the top, x plus 1 times x minus 1 on the bottom. And what you're want to do is you want it to split this rational expression into um, at least two different fractions, hopefully with the right denominators here, like we have them multiplied here. We want to get it to uh, have those as the denominators. Now I'm missing a parentheses because there's one over here too. So let me go ahead and hit enter, let it think for a second. And this is what it came up with for its partial fraction expansion. In other words, you're starting with this more complicated expression that's one fraction, and you're splitting it up into two rational expressions. The uh, denominators that we have are the denominators that are listed down here, x plus 1, x minus 1. The coefficients that you're solving for, that you would do by hand if you were solving this by hand, are going to be 1 half in each case. Partial fractions expansion are, are used um, in a, all over algebra, but they're definitely used in calculus when you start to get into integration by partial fractions. And honestly, doing the partial fractions part is what takes most of the time. Once you have the partial fractions done, the integration when you're doing calculus is not hard. Um, because in order to do this, you really have to set up some equations and solve them for the coefficients. You're typically going to assume that your denominators of your expanded fractions here are going to be the same denominators that we have out front. Let's go ahead and test that a little bit. Instead of x, let's make it uh, x squared, make it a little bit tougher in the top. And instead of x plus 1, let's make it x plus 1 squared. And I'm going to put multiply symbol there to make it clear. So we've, we've changed the problem completely. x squared on the top, x plus 1 squared on the bottom, x minus 1 on the bottom. And we want to try to expand it into some functions that are added together. So we'll let it think for a second. 
and you can see that it came up with quite a more complicated answer and, and this is why partial fractions expansion takes so long to do by hand. Um, we have one denominator of a fraction with x plus one, the coefficients three-fourths. We have an x plus one squared, which is what we have right here. The coefficient of that one's negative one-half. And then when we go over, the third one is we have x minus one, which is the third one over here. So you can see partial fractions does follow a pattern. Um, it is going to involve the, um, I guess you should, you should say the individual polynomials in the bottom of your original fraction. In this case, it was more complicated because when you square something like this, um, you're going to have more terms. It's just harder to say, say it or to explain it without actually showing you the process. But when you study partial fractions expansion, there's a whole list of rules that you have to memorize. If there's a square down here, if there's a cube, I'll even show you. If you have a cube down there, you're going to get an even larger answer um, because every order that you have in one of these little little um, terms down here is going to lead to more terms in your answer. So let's put a, a cube there instead of a square. It'll take a little bit longer and then we'll see now we have x plus 1, a uh, term at x plus 1 in the bottom, a term in x plus 1 squared, a term in x plus 1 cubed, and a term in x minus 1 which is the other guy. So you see when we cube it like that we have a term for each power of the bottom. Uh, and I think that I'll just stop there and not try to teach a lesson in partial fractions expansion here, but suffice to say when you go off and learn how to do this by hand, you're going to have to set up a series of equations, uh, you know, a whole system of equations to solve for these coefficients, one-eighth, negative one-half, um, three-fourths, and negative one-eighth. And you'll have to solve that system of equations just to get the coefficients and then you have the answer. The calculator makes it incredibly easy to do that. All automated. And, um, and and seamless. Now it's important for you to know that the the expand function that we're using here in the calculator right now, uh, I'm using it right now for the process of doing partial fractions expansion, um, which it's very very good at. But it's also used more generally. Like if we come down here, and if you remember back from your algebra, let's hit F2 and hit expand number three. If you try to do something like uh, x plus, let's do something easy, x plus four and square that, you all know that that's x plus 4 times x plus 4 and you're going to use FOIL and multiply that out and you'll get a polynomial. Well, you can stick those right in the calculator and it's going to do that FOIL for you. So that's really, really, really clever. Now if you come in here and change this to a uh, cube, it gets a little bit harder if you're trying to do this by hand. x plus 4 times x plus 4 times x plus 4. In effect, you're taking this answer and you're multiplying by x plus 4 again. You can do it, it's just going to take time. Look how much more complicated your answer gets. Um, we can come over here and change this to something crazy like to the seventh power. Now x plus four to the seventh power would take a very long time to multiply by hand. But with the TI-89, it's done almost instantly. And if your, your answer runs off the screen, you just go up here and you'll see all the powers of x uh, there in the answer. So very very powerful stuff if you're trying to do that and you can you can stick any expression in here it'll do its best to expand it for you um, you could take that and then you can multiply by um, uh, x times y let's say we could even introduce another variable and it'll take carry that through there and you're gonna have a lot of y's in there as well because you're multiplying the whole thing by that let me do one more quick example if you go up here to expand number three let's type something a little bit more complicated in like uh, Let's do x squared. Um, let's do x squared plus two times. Let's actually let's make it a little bit more interesting. Minus uh, x times y plus y squared. Let's do it. Let's close this first guy out. Now let's multiply him by uh, x cubed um, times y minus y squared. Something really difficult. I mean if you tried to multiply this by hand you can do it but it would just be painful. So we're gonna actually add another parentheses, to close it off, hit enter and then almost instantly it's multiplied every term of this guy. It's simplified, added the exponents when necessary and then collected like terms. So here's our final answer here. And you can see you have x and y involved. So it's very very good at symbolic algebra. It can go and follow the rules of algebra 
uh, simplifying terms. It knows when to add exponents. It's doing all that stuff behind the scenes. So, you know, I don't recommend that you don't use this calculator as a crutch so you don't understand any algebra, but it's very, very good if you do a long, complicated multiplication and you just want to quickly check your work before going on to the next problem. Okay, so in this section we've learned quite a deal. We've, uh, we've learned how to use the expand function to either do partial fractions expansion when you have a rational expression and you want to split it up, or when you're just doing uh, this general multiplication of polynomials or cubing of things when you're expanding it into a whole bunch of terms like this. We've also learned how to use the common denominator function to take two rational expressions and add them together. Of course the calculator is going to find a common denominator uh, there as well. Before it does that, it'll add the terms and it'll simplify the answer as well. Two very powerful features in this calculator that you will use a lot if you know how to use them. That's the whole challenge with a tool like this. You have to know how to use them so that you can feel comfortable uh, you, that you're using them properly. And if you know how to use them properly, it'll save you a tremendous amount of time.